All right, I've been getting a lot of questions about uh, my plans and the layout of them and what all you get when you get them, how they're laid out, and how to use them. So I got enough questions where I felt the need to put out a video to explain it. So the first thing is, how do I get the plans? Well, go to Internet Explorer, Safari, Google Chrome, whatever. Uh, you cannot down the, download the plans on a phone. Uh, you might be able to download the file and transfer it, but it's a zip file with PDFs in it. So go to kj-racing with a y dot dpd cart dot com. DPD is digital product download. It's just the server I use to get these plans to you. Go there and you'll see the VF1 in all its glory sitting there. Uh, add that to your cart. Now once you check out, a download link will be emailed to your PayPal email address. Uh, there's no way to split it up, so that's where it goes. And once you get that link, uh, just click the link and you'll be able to download the plans. Now these are the same plans I've had out since January 8th. Uh, there's been a lot of downloads and my last video covered some of the complaints of not having dimensions, but overall there's been a lot of success with, with these plans. So download it, then you can just head to your downloads folder. And there it is, the KJ Racing VF1 Cart Plans 1.2. Um, I didn't update just to add information, not to change any of the plans. And you just create a folder. Now, when you download it, it'll be a zip file, like I said. So just put that into an enclosing folder. There it is. Now whether you're using Mac or Windows, it should be the same. Just double click it to extract all the files. And there it is. KJ Racing VF1 Cart Plans. Now all the goodies are in here. So Build Notes and Legal. Let's start there. Build Notes gives you the tools needed. Um, the list of the dies. I use what's called a 3D CLR die for what I use. Most technical rules require two things when it comes to chassis. That's DOM tubing or drawn over mandrel um, for safety because ERW or uh, welded seam tubing is just not safe enough for race regulations. So all my stuff's based on DOM tubing for that reason. Uh, 3D CLR um, means you take the tube diameter, multiply it by three, and that's your recommended CLR. So that's four and a half inches. I was hoping when I made these plans that, that people would be savvy to that information and have these dies all ready for their tubing. Notcher, you're going to need an inch and a half, inch and a quarter, and an inch if you're using my rear A-arm plans. Welder, you got to be able to weld eighth inch metal, which most welders will do. Uh, here's your metal totals. I'll pause here so you can read it. Um, 0.083 is just your minimum, the minimum wall thickness you need per the rule book. Uh, you do need at least a length of 120 because the front windshield's made out of that so that you can get a tight butt weld using um, inch and a quarter because that's the inside wall of inch and a half 120 so that you can sleeve your butt weld. Makes it stronger, makes it nice. Now these are the actual totals. You want to buy more than this. Um, to leave room for error and even your your chop saw whatever you're using to cut this is going to be at least an eighth of an inch thick or 330 seconds all that adds up in a length of tubing so that you'll need more than this this is just the numbers for the actual tubing uh, front alignment jig I separate that in case you don't use it rear A arms have their own lengths too there's a little disclaimer you can read that uh, here's some notes on the jigs, and then your build notes. Keep these handy in case you have any questions as you're building. You can reference this. Um, I thought about a lot of questions that could be answered with just putting these notes in rather than trying to answer everybody's questions individually. So make sure you read every word of this. And the legal stuff, um, I put this in here. Uh, I, I've got a, a family, and I've got a future and I don't want to make this available to everybody and somebody do something 
uh, not smart and try to blame me for it. Uh, if you take one of these out and run it into a tree, I, I built a good chassis, a good, strong, race-legal chassis. And I, I don't want my future, my family's future, ruined by uh, our, our broken legal system. So uh, there's no easy way to put it. Um, I, I put this in here, the legal stuff, to, to try and help cover my family. So please, please be respectful to that. Now, let's move on from that uncomfortable conversation we just had. All right, so you're going to start with the chassis jig. Uh, here's your diagram. All the parts are numbered just like an IKEA build. Everything is reflected on the master parts list. So this gives you the layout, gives you what goes where, and here's the, these are all PDFs. Everything is PDF, so you should be able to open it anywhere. So the jig master parts list, that gives you your length and notes for where to put stuff measurement wise. I'm not going to open that because that's the, that's the secret there. Um, the update, this is one of the things I added, was just a different view of it and giving this half inch gap here that you can't see just by looking at the, uh, the other one. Uh, your cut wrappers, there's cut wrappers because the, the tubing sits in there to give you your dimension. So the tubing sits up here, sits up here, and sits in here, and the the, the complaint I was getting at first is that it doesn't have dimensions spelled out. Well, your dimensions are in this jig. So if you build this jig correctly, all your dimensions are built into it and, and you don't have to worry about measuring anything. I did that on purpose because it's hard to get tubing lined up to within an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch and it'll make you crazy. But this jig will allow you to line up all the essential parts to make the shape and the strength of this to where everything else just falls in place logically and without having to measure it or use the dimensions for it. All right, so once you have that, you're gonna move on to your chassis. Here's just your not labeled, just picture of the chassis and all its beauty right here. So this will give you an idea of an uncluttered shape of what it should look like. Uh, here's your master parts list. Keep this in your back pocket, pocket because build notes are included on the parts list. It was the most logical place to put it instead of having a completely separate document. Um, this gives you the two blanks, the notes on building, and the label. So let's look at the part diagram. Uh, C is for chassis, and all of these are numbered in kind of a build order that I followed when making the videos and it's turned out to be pretty good. So you can see uh, all the bend diagrams and all the notching diagrams all lead to to this this diagram. So it's a good reference to have. I printed all of this out and just put it in a binder and just had paper versions of everything I could flip to it and tab out the pages and it makes it super fun to build. So let's look at some bend instructions. C3 is your first bend, and it gives you the material, your minimum wall thickness, your die, and it gives a CLR and a calibrated CLR. Your calibrated CLR is off of spring back, so these numbers really aren't important because they're not going to change. Um, gives you your cut length, part weight if you need it, and your bend location. Now in the build notes, I have a, a, a long note about bend locations. I'm using the Rogue Fab M600 bender that has a specific bend location of five and a quarter inches. If you're using, say, a JD squared bender and it has a one inch bend location, you need to subtract one inch from five and a quarter inches, which will give you four and a quarter inches, and then add that number to all of these bend locations. Do that before you bend anything so you don't forget. So this three-quarter bend location with a one-inch bend location of a different bender becomes five inches. All right, so you just add that number. Uh, I hope that makes sense. Uh, I'll try to say it one more time in a different way. You need to subtract your bend location from five and a quarter, which is my bend location, 
and add that number to this because you want it further away from the end. The Rogue Fab Bender has kind of a long location for most benders. Most of them you mark it right on the die. Uh, Rogue Fab, you mark it out pretty far. All of my plans, all the bends, all the notches include extra room to fit them into your machines. So you don't have to worry about uh, bending a piece and it falling out of your die or getting crumpled in there. That's something I learned by making these is that you need to include material to fit it in your bender and fit it in your notch without having any trouble. Okay, let's look at the notching or the cut wrappers. All right, C3 is your first notch. Um, in the video you see I put a line all the way down the tube before I even bend it. I put that line in line with the outside radius and then I cut this wrapper out. You don't need to cut it out exactly. And then I fold it on this red line. I measure two inches from the end of the tube. That's what this is. And then that makes kind of a crosshair to put the red and blue line onto on your tubing. You make your notch, which for this one is 1.5. And I set the cut angle to 16.7. Now if you're using a, a Rogue Fab notcher, um, it zeroes on 90. So this would become 106.7 if you do it one way. Or you can subtract 16.7 from 90 to get it the other way. What I do is I just count by fives on the bender. So I'd go to 85, 80, 75, and then 1.7 degrees to get that. Uh, this has zero offset. Offset is up and down on the tube if you're going to leave any on the top or bottom. Setback is zero for this because we're cutting off the end of the tube. Uh, that's explained in the build notes as well. Let's look at one that does have a setback, and that's C20. And this is one of the things I did. I made this piece long so you could fit it into your bender and into your notcher. So this one has a six and three quarter setback. That means there's an extra six and three quarter inches of material to fit this in your bender and into your notcher. You don't need to worry about this. You just need to put your crosshair 9 and 3 16 from the end of the tube and line it up with the outside radius and make your cut. That easy. Now you'll notice these have a start and an end, especially on the bent pieces. So this is the end of C20. And then the other one is the start of C20. So if you look back in the, in the main folder, there is a tube start reference. Now this is the entire chassis. The tube start and tube end is critical for the bent pieces but not for the straight pieces because the start and end can flop. It doesn't matter because it's straight. But uh, like for this roof piece, the start is the short piece of this bend. So your start cut wrapper will go on the short side of this bend and your end cut wrapper will go on the long piece and all of those are diagrammed here. Now I didn't put this on the part diagram because it was cluttered enough already and you only really need it for the bent pieces as I said. So for your A pillar right here the start is on the long piece at the bottom and the end is on the short piece at the top. So this cleans up a lot of confusion with the cut wrappers, makes it easier to build and reference. All right, moving on to uh, the front A-arm alignment jig. Uh, this is a separate folder because it's semi-optional to use. If you have your own front A-arm geometry that you want to use, uh, it is a variable frame cart. You can do some math and, and, and get your own A-arm geometry if you want. But these are the pieces. The, the top bar is longer than the bottom, so you just mark it at the center, line it up, and you can put all of these, this box in to make it strong and square. Um, you do have the option of doing what I did and just using a single bar. It's still going to line up. Uh, using two obviously makes something more square, so I just over-engineered it for, the, for anyone that might need it. Uh, it does specify you have to put ends on here. Um, your pieces for the bottom one are built into the main jig. 
So these are the bottom pieces. They're built into the main jig. So that front A-arm alignment jig just slides on to these pieces and then you drop C20 and C21 into the top pieces, align it with the front and with this piece, tack it in, and then your front end is completely square and completely aligned. That's why I made jigs for everything. And then finally the rear A-arms if you decide to use those. Here's the rear A-arm master parts list including the jig. Here's the jig for it. Uh, it's super simple. Um, I made it that way in case you wanted to make your own different track width or adjust these in any way. But this measurement from here to the center of this is 10 and a half inches. Um, that gives you the same wheelbase as me, helps line up your CV joints, and it's just the way I designed it. Um, it's super simple. One set of jigs covers both sides because you just flip it. Makes it really, really easy. And then here's the picture of the ends boxed in, ready to uh, make some parts to put in there. If you look in the actual arms themselves, here's the A-arm part identifier for the upper and lower. Bend instructions for each piece and your cut wrappers for all the pieces. Follow all that and you have a full set of rear, upper, and lower A-arms. So that's it. Um, hopefully it's well organized. Um, it's been successful. There's been uh, some builds and they look fantastic. Uh, there's a build group on Facebook so if you're having issues you can address it to the group and the people that are building this and myself can answer your questions. Uh, obviously you can leave comments in uh, YouTube and I'll try to answer those. But this is what's all included in, in my plans. I hope you enjoy it. Let me know what you think. And as always, I, I appreciate it. Thanks for watching.